Hello, everyone. Um, shall I start, Adriana, or you want to say? Yeah, Marcelo, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it is with great happiness that um, we start our, our activities uh, this year, right? That's the first lecture. Um, and it's also like it's also a very special moment um, for us, right? I think like if we think that uh, this year is just starting, right? I know that the the years, the new years, is already like few year, few days back, right? But we can still use like this as a symbolic moment for us um, as as we kickstart our new year uh, in our activities. And and the talk today is uh, is 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 very like profound in terms of um, the meaning for us, right? Like it's the awakening of the con of consciences, right? And and the purpose of this talk is is basically to discuss um, a little bit about uh, what are the, the teachings of the spiritual doctrine that can help us in this process of um, awareness, right? Awakening of our consciousness and, and, and all the support that we have um, from the doctrine, like giving us the meaning why we are here, right? Um, and especially like this moment that we are living now, which is really hard for everyone. But, um, and how can we, how can we, um, in spite of all the difficulties, um, make good use of this moment um, as we know, the doctrine gives us a lot of uh, um, awareness, right, about the purpose of life and why we are here, um, and and the opportunities that we have, right, in, in spite of all the difficulties, and and as we will see, like all those um, situations and moments that we uh, live here, they are part of a, of a program, right? Like we know that we have this program, and and. And they help us to awake our conscience, right? Mm -hmm. And and to, just to have a start, um, the first thing that we need to to to, to reflect, right, um, is on the term conscience itself. And in very interestingly, um, in the spirit book, spirits book, there is um, a question. 835, um, which is not really related to only conscience, but that, that's how the spirits uh, answer. It's, it's also talking a little bit of uh, freedom, right? Uh, freedom of thought, freedom of conscience. But the spirits, it's, they, they, in the answer, they kind of define conscience. They, they say conscience is an inner thought that belongs to persons, as do all their other thoughts. And, and that's, again, was the answer for the question, is freedom of, con of conscience a consequence of freedom of thought, right? And then they said, the conscience is an inner thought as, as any other thought, right? And, and that belongs to the person. Um, and then from here, we can see like that the conscience is like our inner thought. And, and when, we, when we say awakening of conscience, what do we mean, right? But uh, first, we start with the, with the concept, right? So that we all have that inner thought in our in ourselves, right? And that and that belongs to us, and and that's it's like an inner voice that we have, and and this inner voice is always telling us like um, how to proceed and and if something we do is wrong or not, and it's very interesting because sometimes we say, oh, I did something and and that's wrong. My, but everybody is approving that my actions, right? Like uh, the world is approving my actions, but uh, but my but in my in my head, like in my inner thoughts, I feel that that's not right, and that's actually the conscience that is saying this is not right, and and on, and the contrary is also true, right? Like sometimes we do something that it's it's correct. Everybody saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do that." Right, and everybody is like saying condemning you, or like saying, "No, oh, you, why did you do that? Uh, nobody does that." But in your inner self, you know that that's the right thing to do. So, so we all have our consciences, right? And then, like, and that conscious that that we need to awake, and that conscious, as I said, is always guiding us, like saying, oh, "You should proceed this way or proceed that way." And as as we become more um, 
aware of things, as we, we learn new things, we know how to proceed, right? And whenever we proceed against what we know, we create a problem because our actions are not according to what we know, what we already agreed that um, that's the correct way to, to act, right? And that's, and that's one thing that we can say the, the spiritist doctrine is, is helping us, but at the same time is putting us ourselves in a, in a situation that we don't have excuses, right? If, if you know that something has consequences and you still do that, you, you have responsibility, right? And that's, and that's the thing. And the spiritual doctrine makes us more free, right? It's us, it kind of increase, increases our freedom because it, it empowers our, our actions, right? Giving us the knowledge, but at the same time, it gives us more responsibility. And, and, and that's true. As more evolved we are, like the more knowledge we will have and more responsibility and more like our conscience is always like telling us um, of, of what to do, right? And then, and how, how can we then guide our, our actions, right? And then we are gonna use some of the questions from the spirit book. Um, and it's another very interesting question. Um, where is God's laws written, right? In the conscience, that's, that's what we are talking about. And, and, and it's important for us to, to understand that we have within ourselves ourselves the, the the god's laws right and that's why that 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 thinking is there but it's up to us right to to really understand that the the fact that i i know something doesn't mean that i understand it. and that's why we have to live through incarnations and 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 gradually understand and that's why the we need to to learn god's laws right and and we have in our conscious that those laws but we need to kind of uh, think through them and 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 really like reason and and make that as part of our livings right living so that's that's why we need to incarnate and, and go through all our evolution process and in question 630 uh kardec asked how can we distinguish between good and evil right and that's basically like that how we proceed like we have choices right how do we distinguish Good is everything that is in harmony with God's law, where, whereas evil is everything that it deviates from it. Thus, doing what is good conforms to God's law, while doing evil infringes on it. So, again, doing good or doing evil is based on God's laws, and the God's laws is written in our conscience, right? So, again, our purpose is learning those laws and, and and the spirits book has a very deep dive on the on the on the god's laws and it, it is a very good guide for us on how to to act and moving forward um we're gonna enter now a, a part where we are gonna talk a lot about joanna de angelis as everybody knows jazz means joanna de angelis spirit society society right um and joanna de angelis is a spirit um, and Divaldo Franco is, is the medium where, that has uh, handwritten a lot of books from Joana de Angelis. And Joana, Joana de Angelis has uh, a very deep uh, study and, and a lot of work on, on this area of consciousness. And, and there is a little book actually that I based my, um, my talk, which is called Mo uh, Moments of Consciousness is the one that is mentioned here in the, in the it's this little, it's like a little book with the uh, messages. Uh, it's only in Portuguese, unfortunately, but um, I translated uh, a lot of passages and and probably I haven't talked to, to Daisy, but maybe and Bruno, we, I think we're going to go back to this topic because it's so broad that we can even have like other lectures on it and, and go deeper on Joanna de Angelis um, reflections on this moment, uh, on these uh, moments of consciousness, right? Uh, there is actually a, a series of books called Moments, uh, Moments of Happiness, Moments of uh, uh, Harmony. I have a, a bunch of them and they're, they're really good. Um, and, and in this introduction of this little book, she says that there is a lack of greatness of love, of self-denial in the moments, uh, in these moments on earth. And again, like we, we read that book and with the perspective that we are living today, and you can clearly see um, how 
the things that we're living now are challenges that it will uh, create on us the need for for awareness or to consciousness to the, to awake our consciousness that's the that's the, the title right that's the topic that we're discussing here and 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 she, and she goes like deep on this reflection that saying that there is a lack of greatness and of love and and there is another book which is the awake of the spirit which is another book on, on her series that she says that not only that is happening today but uh, what's happening is that people are living like in illusion they're like um they don't have time for themselves and they don't have time to think about their own possibilities or their own purpose in their lives so they they live their lives in in a sort of uh, uh escaping from that reality or from that moment and it's very interesting because the 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 the, the passage in the beginning was uh that Claudia read by chance, which was not by chance, but it's called Quiet Place, right? Um, quiet Place, right? I, I think that's the, the, the it, it means like there's so much lack of that today, right? People don't spend time thinking like we, like we ourselves, like we, we should reflect on our own actions, like how, how much of my time I spend valuing my thoughts or like meditating or or studying or trying to de dedicate some time that it's important for me to grow spiritually as a person, right? Um, or to, to have, uh, even for my healthness, right? Like people, um, th those moments, she says that even for health, for your health is important. And people don't have that time anymore because they create so many uh, needs. And, and, and in order to achieve those needs, they they, they don't have time for themselves. So it's, it's, it's even like a, a lack of love for themselves. And it's very con contradictory because people are on, on search of something that is actually harmful for them. And, and that's why she's again saying here that there's a lack of this um, in, the, in these moments on earth. However, uh, she's not all uh, pessimist, right? She says that it, it is in human nature, the need for peace, and the yearning for well-being. So even like as, as we live on, through those moments, it, it, it comes a time where the person um, really thinks about their, their action. Like if, if we can take our own um, examples, right? Or situations where we say, why, why am I doing this, right? And, and that those moments, they come usually, unfortunately, after we suffer. Um, and then, and, and the suffering is what triggers that. But it, it doesn't have to be that way. And because if we decide uh, to put our time, our, 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 our love in something, okay, this is important for me, or this is important for me to help someone or to help myself or to, to overcome some of, my, um, uh, some of my deficiencies, right? Uh, then that becomes a moment that you're, you're gonna dedicate to yourself. And, and so we need that and, and that, and that search for that those moments is within our freedom to do or not to do, right? And, 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 and it's interesting because the more conscious we become, the more we start to detect those moments that we should not uh, do, be doing those things or should not worry with those things or say, or, or you start making changes that doesn't affect you. Uh, because you're conscious of what you're doing. That's why it's important for us to to have this, um, uh, those moments of consciousness, right? Um, and the, and, and she, the, there's a the first passage on this uh, book is is entitled uh, the acquisition of consciousness. It's the first chapter, right? And then she says that the, the acquisition of consciousness is a life challenge, which deserves examination, consideration, and work. Again, we to become conscious is something that it requires from us dedication and requires work. It, it's not something that is, is gonna come by uh, without any uh, effort on our end. And that's interesting because a, a lot of people think that, oh, just by becoming a um, follower of some religion, it's gonna solve all my problems, right? Some people think, or oh, or not even religion, or just because I'm following that person or, or, or this line of thought, 
I'm going to become better, right? No, it, it doesn't matter what is your religion is, but your acquisition of consciousness, they require your work. And that's, and that's part even of the law of God, right? Because there is the law of progress. And if you read the spiritual book, there's a chapter talking about that law. We're going to talk one, about one question later. But that law is inexorable, inexorable. It means you, you have to go through it, either you want or not. It's something that it's, it's on the plans of God, right? And, and then, so, but that requires work. It requires of, of us dedication. And here, that's what uh, Joanna Judge is saying. It requires consideration. And, and so many times uh, we postpone this or we, tr we try to create things that is just for, as I said, as a, a mechanism of escape, right, of reality, right? And, and, and uh, of course, we, we all need time where we are going to have like some leisure or some of those things that are also important, right? But some people are only seeking for that or, or like only seeking for show off. And, and actually, she says in... in, in in, in this book that all those people who are always trying to show their everything that they're doing there they have they're actually are living in conflict and they're trying to um, hide that or even the moment to think about their their inner reality by doing so um, it's interesting because I, I was talking to someone the other one day uh, I used to work for snap and we we know like some data about how many times the person, some of those people, famous people uh, take photos. And we were doing computations, like how many photos a person took in one day. And, and it's like, it's almost like in a, in a minute, she took like two photos, like if you think, and it, it, it's a lot. Like if you think about someone taking pictures all the time and, and they don't have time for anything else, but they, they created so much of pressure on, on to kind of, uh, uh, to please other people and then sometimes they're doing something that is harming themselves right and it's very contradictory um i mean again we're just like analyzing uh, what happens right without judgment but it's it's really like uh, unbelievable just to think the how many time i mean the amount of time that people dedicate to that so the intellectual moral maturation provides conscience which promotes truth and life and, and that's just a consequence, like the more mature we are intellectual and morally, it, it, it promotes our, our, our life, right? And again, it's very interesting here. We have intellectual and moral. Intellectual is knowledge, right? And moral is when you act about that knowledge. And we're going to go back to that later. And, and, and this is uh, the acquisition of consciousness. We will allow you to evaluate profound factors such as good and evil, right and wrong, duty and responsibility, honor and shame, noble and vulgar, lawful and irregular, freedom and debauchery. Um, Jonah generally use sometimes some words very like, uh, at the same time, like a little bit not so popular, so common, but very like broad in, 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 in meaning, right? And uh, for those who read uh, her works, know that and, and it's kind of challenging to translate to English and I hope I, I, hope I I spent some time on this translation. I think it's it's very close to the to the original meaning. But but again, uh, the, the acquisition of conscience is something very important for us, right? That's what we can grasp from this uh, paragraph, because she's saying here uh, with with the knowledge of that uh, consciousness, right? That, that state of mind, we will allow us to to evaluate those good and evil, right? So. I, again, we, we know, the more we know God's laws, the more we know how to act, right? The good and evil. The, so, of course, we're going to choose good. And what's right and wrong, right? The duty and responsibility. And, and again, like this regarding to our own actions. Because sometimes we, um, we, are, being, we are acting in a, in a way that we're res irresponsible without knowing. And that those are the worst cases, right? Not you're doing that, and of course, God's God knows that if you're doing something without knowing the like the consequences are less than you're doing it knowing, right? But but of course, we don't want to be in that case. Like if I know that uh, I need to make a change on my diet, for example, if I read a book and and that book makes me conscious conscient of that. 
and that's going to have a positive impact on my life. I want to read that book and I want to make those changes, right? And and that's that's what like acquiring that that conscience is something that is going to give me a good outcome. But that's of course it depends on my free will. And that's very interesting because if you say, "Oh, that means knowledge is not enough." It's not enough because we have doctors that treat like people who smoke but they themselves know all the consequences and they they smoke so they have the knowledge but they don't act according to that knowledge right and so it's important to have that knowledge but at the same time we have to evaluate our actions right and then act according to that conscious and and the more we do that without having to think okay i know this is important for me i'm going to do it and then that becomes something uh, automatic for me like i don't have to think of course the the, the change is not going to come from from one day to the other right because it, it's a process that we have to live and we have to pers to be perseverant and and jonah janjan is going to continue later to to talk about those but but again like the, this uh, uh, awareness is very important and 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 make us uh, doing those dist distinctions right so your earthly existence can be considered a company that you must drive safely as carefully as possible. And that was very like, like when I saw this, I said, okay, I, we need to talk about this. And uh, um, because it's, co it's comparing something with uh, our, our existence with the company, right? And that's something that we are like used to. And, and, and she goes even further. She gives... Um, she says that all commitment and devotion will translate into profit. So it's something easy for us to understand, right? So we devote time, we're going to have a profit, right? That's the company, like, it is similar, right? Which you can always turn to during moments of hardship. And that's usually where we are more, more challenging, right? Because we, we, we live hard moments in our lives. And according on how we act, it is how we are going to have that profit or not we're not going to have profit right profit means you're acting according to god's law right translating like this uh, this analogy right and, and 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 as i said she goes even further because she gives us some rules that can help us in our company so it's like she she gives some guidance on how to be profitable <laughs> so and then she says that th those are brief rules and so that you can improve the performance of your company, such as, and we, we start. Um, the first one, manage your conflicts. Again, we all have conflicts, right? But we need to manage them. We, don't, we should not let, let the, the conflicts guide us, right? And, and, and how do we do that process? And that's what we are all talking about here, right? So the fact that we are here, we are looking for resources to manage our conflicts right because then we are going to discuss here uh, on on what are the guidance that the spirits give us the doctrine give us right and of course we have that free will to act and we know that in some areas we are still requiring like some reflection or we require help or even sometimes finding medical assistance in our complex that's something that's that we need to, to do if that's what we need to manage our complex right but we need to do that because we need to live in harmony. We need to live a life where we have this awareness, right? That's what we are talking about here. And, and she goes, she has even books about this. So it, I cannot go deeper. As I said, this is more like a broad um, view of what is available. And of course, we are going to talk about this um, even on those lectures on the Mondays. But it's important for us to understand that we need to manage those conflicts and we need to be to use all our um, like our um, efforts in, in, towards that, right? And the second one, avoid choosing a man model to follow. And when I, when I read this, actually, I said, well, but the spirit's book also say that we sh Jesus the best model, right? But then when she says a man model, I think she meant she mean like someone who is alive or someone who is who is not Jesus, right? Like it's someone, and of course, and I was, even myself, I was thinking, okay, but I can choose someone, for example, even came to my mind like Chico Xavier or other uh, men that they have good examples to follow. 
but I'm not following him all the all of the things that he do, right? But I follow his good examples, and then at least I, I'm I'm just sharing what I when I saw this, and then I said, okay, but Jesus is different, right? Because remember, Jesus said that he was the the, the Son of Man, so he is the target of what we're gonna be in the future, right? And he is the model that we all should follow, right? But not choose a man model to follow because they all they can make mistakes. And, and they can um, fail, right? That's basically the point. Have confidence in your values, making efforts to always improve and without discouragement. And that's like really like very important um, point for the company, right? The company is meaning like our lives, right? Because in, in so many times, like whenever we have some challenge, the first thing that we do is become discouraged, right? And that's, she goes to the root here. Don't be discouraged, right? Make all efforts to always improve, to always seek for some different way of doing things or seeking for help, right? So it's, it's key for us, right, to be successful. If you make a mistake, repeat the action. If you get it right, go ahead. So neither stop uh, just because you achieve something, I'm happy, everything's good. No, go ahead. There are other things that you need to acquire, right? Let me go a little faster here because time is... <laughs> Don't avoid facing problems using compromising solution that will surprise you later with unfortunate, de unfortunate dependencies. Again, like everything that we solve, we should follow God's laws, right? And if you're taking a compromising solution, it means you're just postponing the problem. You're not solving the problem, right? And then that's very important for us to know. Um, React to depression by working without self-pity or lazy accommodation. Again, some uh, we, 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 this is like a trap. Like self-pity is like that person that is always saying, oh, I'm suffering. Like I, And then you go to someone else and start being self-pity. And that other person, instead of helping, with, it makes you even like more and more self-pity and, and just like a, a snowball, right? And then you're going to be like really depressed, right? And we should react to that and not be self-pity or uh, be used to lazy accommodation and, and just act and seek for help, right? And, and there are different ways we can seek for help. The Spiritist Doctrine is, 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 uh, is there for us. The Spiritist Center, we have the, the Fraternal Talk, where we have friends we can reach out, right? There are many ways for us to, to, to find help. There's like medical assistance that we can, we can seek for, right? Keep in mind that yours are not the worst problems. They, they weigh the volume that you give them. And that's like so true, right? Because sometimes we make our problems the worst, right? And it's like, especially if, you, if we're being self-pity, that's the case, right? We want to make it the worst. And, and that she says that don't do that, right? Keep in mind, you're not the worst problems. That the volume that they weigh is what we give them, right? And then it's up to us to make, uh, to make them like not as heavy, right? And then, and, and just by changing the way we act, we can do that. Free yourself from the pessimistic complaint and meditate more formulas to persevere and produce. Again, important word here, meditation, right? The initial, talk, uh, the initial reading talked about the quiet moment, right? The, the quiet place, quiet moments and moments that you de dedicate to yourself, like being in a quiet place, right? Meditating and just thinking, reading something and then just doing your prayers. So there are, those are all moments very, very important for, for us, right? For our company, right? Um, to perform well and to give us strength, right? To give us uh, uh, guidance or even like to open our minds to the influence of the good spirits, right? Because sometimes it's it's on those little moments that we we can be helped. Never give away the empty hour, which is filled with boredom, discomfort, or disturbance. Again, like we can put ourselves here, right? Like how many times we give away our time to empty hours or uh, reading things that are like. Uh, or or just like scrolling right like see if you can put like today right the social media and uh, it's i'm not condemning this but i'm just saying that we should everyone reflect right how we employ our time and how we are doing that allocation it's up to everyone 
right? I, I told in the beginning that, uh, I told you guys in the beginning that our conscience is our guide, right? And then like, we should just like act. And, and even if we do that, don't condemn ourselves, just use a little bit of time allocation to, to have that quiet moment for us, right? Never give away, oh, oh, that's repeated, sorry. Whatever you do, do it well with dedication. Remember that you are human and that the awareness process is slow and that you acquire safety and lucidity through continuous action. When I read this, uh, I think it's the last one. It's, it's so powerful because it, it says that, uh, first, don't expect um, to have changes like from today to tomorrow, right? We, we need to be... Uh, um aware of that right like that the changes that some some changes take time right so maybe so if if i decide to to stop eating something to, because of it's doing bad for my health uh it's easy to stop doing from today for tomorrow but the certain way of we acting or uh things that we we cannot control well right some some of way of acting it might take time but the the, the important thing here is that we need to persevere, right? And I think that's a dedication, right? She said perseverance, perseverance was on the previous one, right? And the process is slow and that we acquire safety to see through continuous action. So keep always doing that, right? So it's, a, it's very important. And uh, again, uh, all, all those passages there, if you wanna read more, it's the first uh, chapter on that little book, uh, this little book, Moments of Consciousness. And uh, and actually this chapter, um, it's, it ends with a question, um, but we're gonna get there. Um, again, like the awakening of our conscience, it, 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 it's really uh, connected to the pro moral progress I mentioned before, right? So we have to progress morally. Um, and, and of course, we also need to progress intellectually, right? And then question 780 of the Spirit's book says, those progress, uh, moral progress always follow the intellectual progress and the spirits say, yes, it's the consequence. It's consequence because it does not always follow, but it doesn't always follow it immediately. And it's important for us to, to discuss this question because we need the intellectual progress, right? We need to know things like to act or the, the knowledge of the law. We, that's why I said the, the God's laws are depicted in the spirit's book. You can read, right? We, can, we have all the, the books from the doctrine that can help us in the intellectual development. And of course, as we learn them, we start acting according to them. That's how we progress morally, right? And, and, and the follow-up question is, how can intellectual progress lead to moral progress, right? Why? And by making good and evil understandable. And again, we go back to what we, where we started, right? Um, the conscience has God's laws and that, and that God's laws tells us to do the right or the wrong thing. And, and that's an intellectual process to learn it right or, or at least to understand it and then by making this understandable we can act right and that's where that's where we, we achieve this moral progress right the development of free will follows the development of intelligence and increases the responsibility of human humans for their acts as i said before right the more knowledgeable we are the more responsible we are for our actions and and actually like that our conscience because becomes even more um challenging on us because it starts saying you're doing the wrong thing why and and, and it, it becomes our guide even more and more right of course we should not uh, condemn ourselves but it, it's it's natural that it, that happens right it, it always like asking us about our actions and again we go back to the question we started with um, where is God's laws written in our conscience right and that's how we, we finish our reflection. As I mentioned before, um, this topic is so broad, right? It encompasses all like the, the doctrine and all like acquiring of conscience, right? If you think about the gospel, the gospel is, is all of the, the Jesus teachings, right? And Jesus teachings are the best expression of God's laws, right? And, and that's why we, the gospel is also very good guidance for us. And, and as we start a new year, it's important for us to, to again, to allocate that time for, for us to develop our consciousness, right? And, and how can we do that in our home? The gospel at home is a perfect moment for us to bring Jesus' teachings for our home, 
right? And, and to slowly, like it's a gradual process, like every gospel is a chance for us to learn more God's laws, right? Because the, Jesus' teachings is the best expression of it, right? And, 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 and again, like coming to the Spirit Center, joining a study group, there are so many opportunities for us, right? To, to, to develop our consciousness, right? And, and, and of course, sometimes you can even join some, some, some other uh, conferences here in, this, in the center, right? You can even like read books, not only books from the Spiritist Doctrine, but any book that is going to help you to, to, to have more um, uh, knowledge of things. Sometimes like even some book related to your health or related to, to other topics that are important. But always keeping in mind, it's important for me to have that moment. And, and, and that's very crucial. At the same time, uh, at the same importance we give to our food, right? We have breakfast, we lunch, we have dinner, right? It's important for us to keep our health. Those moments are also important for us, for our spiritual health, right? And, and to develop this conscience, which is going to guide us better and better um, in this life. And with that, um, we, we finish today. Um,